please stand and join me to the pledge and to the American flag. Attention, salute, pledge. Please pledge the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. And to the Bible, attention, salute, pledge. Thank you for this day, and just hope everybody have a good day today, and just protect us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, good morning. I'm excited to be in chapel with you this morning. Um, Mrs. Lowe isn't here today, so we don't have a word for the day, but I do want to recognize a birthday today. So Titus Holdridge, where's he at? Happy birthday, Titus. Hope you have a great birthday. Okay, well, we're going to worship together. So if you want to stand with me, we're going to sing a few songs.
God, I just thank you so much for the opportunity to come together and worship you this morning. I pray that you would just bless Mrs. Hansel as she comes and shares with us, that you would just give her the words to say and give us the ears to hear what you might have for us. And just pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm so excited to be here with all of you today. My name is Mrs. Hansel, and I teach in the junior high um, in the secondary, and I wanted to come and share with you today. I'm going to talk to you today about choices. And so while we get started, I want to ask you a question to think about in your mind. What do you do when you have an important decision or an important choice to make? Think about what you do before you make that choice. I'm going to talk about some things that sometimes people do to make choices. Uh, one of the things that uh, some people do is they flip a coin. Okay, so if you've seen a coin before, it has two sides, right? It has two different pictures on it. And so sometimes people will throw the coin up in the air and let it land on the ground and see what picture comes up. And they make their choice based on that. I don't think that's probably a very good way to make a choice, though. What if it's the bad choice that comes up? I used to do this when I was little and um, when the coin didn't go the way I wanted it to because I already knew what I really wanted to do, right? I would just flip it again. I would keep flipping it until it came up the answer I wanted. So really, I had already made the choice before I flipped the coin. So flipping the coin was just silly. Another way that people sometimes do is, another way that people make choices is this. Can you see this? You can't see it? This is a fortune cookie, okay? And sometimes you get these uh, at restaurants or you can buy them at the grocery store. And what they are is they're a little cookie. But if you open them up and you break the cookie, they're pretty tasty too. You can eat it afterwards, which is kind of fun. You open this up and it gives you what's supposed to be your fortune. Okay, so if I was gonna make my choice based on this today, it says, a romance will appear in your life. Whoa. Okay, well, what if my choice was whether or not I wear a blue shirt or a red shirt? Is that very helpful advice for that? No, so that doesn't really help me make a choice, does it? Another way that sometimes people make choices is the eeny, meeny, miny, mo method. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Okay, where you have lots of choices and you try to decide based on a rhyme. Okay, so we're just leaving our choice up to chance. We don't really, we're not making, we're not making the choice. It's just being uh, given to us if we do it that way. Um, probably not a very helpful way to make a decision. But um, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, the Bible says, Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given to you. Knock and the door will be open. And this is the way that we can find out God's plan for our choices instead of just making a choice ourselves or not making a choice and picking something randomly to make our choice for us because we don't want to make the choice. God's way is always the best way. Uh, so uh, this verse talks about three different things that we need to do when we are um, faced with a choice. The first thing that we need to do when we're making a decision is to look for the answer. Where else would we look for the answer other than God's word? God gives us the answers in his book called the Bible. 
In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So God gave us the answers in his Bible if we choose to look for them. Matthew 6, and 34 says, Seek first, there's our word, seek. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So we don't have to worry because God already has our plan. All we have to do is seek and look in the Bible to find out what plan he has for us. Our second word that our verse for today talked about was asking. The next thing we need to do when we have an important decision is pray and ask God what we should do. John 14, 16 through 17 says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. That is Jesus promising that we would have the Holy Spirit as our helper to be able to help us as we ask him for what we are supposed to do. He's living inside of us, and he can help us to be able to make those good choices. The third thing that the scripture tells us to do is knock, okay? This one is a little bit figurative because we don't walk around just randomly knocking on things to make decisions, right? Okay, so if we, in our brain, every decision we say is a door, the word says that we should knock on the door. When we face opportunities in life, we might have three different doors that we could choose from, and maybe they're all good doors, but we have to go through the right door. So we knock on the door and wait to see if God will open that opportunity for us. In Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. That helps me because I have to realize that my way isn't always the right way. Sometimes what I really want to do isn't the right thing to do. So I have to wait and find out what God wants me to do. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. So he's going to show me which door I should go through. That's what making straight the path is. He's going to be like, oh, uh, this is the way to go, right? So uh, what we should do when we face important decisions is seek for the answer in the Bible, ask God in prayer for what the right answer is, and knock, waiting to see if God will open that opportunity for us. I'm so excited to have been able to share this with you, and um, just as a little extra treat, some of my students are going to come around to your classroom and bring you fortune cookies today for you to be able to take home and enjoy, okay? If you'll pray with me, we'll be finished for today. Father God, I thank you so much for these students and teachers in this room. Lord, I thank you that you um, have created a place like CHA where we can come and learn more about you every day and that we can come and um, fellowship with one another and sing your praises, Lord. God, we thank you that you are good and that you give us all the answers that we need, Lord. God, I just ask that you would give us a good day the rest of today and that you would uh, bless our time from here forward. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Can we thank Mrs. Hansel for sharing with us this morning? Thank you very much. That's great. Okay, that's all we have for today. You can give your attention to your teachers, and you are dismissed. Have a great day.